ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಈಶಾವಾಸ್ಯಮಿದಗಂಸ ಜಗತ್ಯಾಂ ಜಗತ್ ತೇನ ತ್ಯಕ್ತೇನ ಭುಂಜೀತ ಮಾಗೃಧಕ್ಕಸ್ವಿಧನ ಕುರ್ವನ್ನೇವೇಹ ಕರ್ಮ ಜಿಜೀವಿಷೇಚತಗಂ ಸಾಹ ಯೀ ನಾಣ್ಯಥೇತೋಸ್ತಿ ನ ಕನ್ಮಲಿಪ್ಯತೆ ನರೇ ಅಸೂರ್ಯ ನಾಮತೆ ಲೋಕ ಅಂಧೇನ ತಮಸ ವೃತ ತಾಗಂಸ್ತೆ ಪ್ರೇತ್ಯಾಭಿಗತಿ ಏಕೆ ಚಾತ್ಮಹನೋ ಜನಾ ಅನೇಜದೇಕ ಮನಸೋ ಜವೀಯ ನೈನ ದೇವಾ ಆಪ್ನುವನ್ ಪೂರ್ವಮರ್ಷತ್ ತದ್ಧಾವತೋ ಅನ್ಯಾನತ್ತೇತಿ ತಿಷ್ಠತ್ ತಸ್ಮಿನ್ನ ಪೋ ಮಾತರಿಶ್ವಾದಾತಿ ತದೈಜತಿ ತನ್ನೈಜತಿ ತದ್ದೂರೆ ತದ್ವಂತಿಕೆ ತದಂತರಸ್ಯ ತದು ಸರ್ವಸ್ಯಾಷ್ಯತ ಯಸ್ತು ಸರ್ವಾಣಿ ಭೂತ ಆತ್ಮನ್ಯೇವಾಪಶ್ಯತಿಭೂತು ಚಾತ್ಮನ ತೋ ನಿಜುಗುಪ್ಸತೆ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಸರ್ವಾಣಿ ಭೂತ ಆತ್ಮೈವಾಭೂತ್ವಿಜಾನತ ತತ್ರ ಕೋ ಮೋಹ ಕಃ ಶೋಕ ಏಕತ್ವಮನುಪಶ್ಯತ ಸಪರ್ಯಗಾಕ್ಷುಕ್ರ ಅಕಾಯಮವೃಣ ಅಸ್ನಾಗಂ ಶುದ್ಧ ಅಪಾಪವಿಧ ಕವೀರ್ಮನೀಷೀ ಪರಿಭೂ ಸ್ವಯಂಭೂ ಯಥಾತ್ಯಥೋತ್ಥಾನ್ ವ್ಯದಾತ್ ಶಾಶ್ವತೀಭ್ಯ ಸಮಾಭ್ಯ ಅಂಧಂತಮ ಪ್ರವಿಶಂತಿ ಯೇ ವಿದ್ಯಾಪಾಸತೆ ತೋ ಭೂಯ ಇವ ತೆ ತಮೋ ಯ ಉ ವಿದ್ಯಾಗಂ ರತ ಅನ್ಯದೇವಾಹುರ್ ವಿದ್ಯಯ ಅನ್ಯದಾಹುರ ವಿದ್ಯಯ ಇುಶ್ರುಮ ಧೀರಾಂ ಯೇನಸ್ತ್ಯಚಕ್ಷರೆ ವಿದ್ಯಾಂಚಾವಿದ್ಯಾಂಚ್ತೇದೋಭಯಗಂಸ ಅವಿದ್ಯಯ ಮೃತ್ಯು ತೀರ್ಥ ವಿದ್ಯಯ ಮೃತಮಶ್ನುತೆ ಅಂಧಂತಮ ಪ್ರವಿಶಂತಿ ಯೇ ಸಂಭೂತಿಪಾಸತೆ ತೋ ಭೂಯ ಇವ ತೆ ತಮೋ ಯ ಉ ಸಂಭೂತ್ಯಾಗಂ ರತ ಅನ್ಯದೇವಾಹು ಸಂಭವಾತ್ ಅನ್ಯದಾಹುರ ಸಂಭವಾತ್ ಇುಶ್ರುಮಧೀರಾಂ ಯೇನಸ್ತ್ವಿಚಕ್ಷಿರೆ ಸಂಭೂತಿ ವಿನಾಶಂ ಯಸ್ತ್ವೇದೋಭಯಗಂಸ ವಿನಾಶೇನ ಮೃತ್ಯು ತೀರ್ಥ ಸಂಭೂತ್ಯಾಮೃತಮಶ್ನುತೆ ಸಂಭೂತ್ಯಾಮೃತಮಶ್ನುತೆ ಹಿರಣ್ಮಯೇನ ಪಾತ್ರೇಣ ಸತ್ಯಸ್ಯಾಪಿ ತಂ ಮುಖಂ ತತ್ವಂ ಪೂಷಣ್ಣ ಪಾವೃಣು ಸತ್ಯಧರ್ಮಾಯ ದೃಷ್ಟೇ ಪೂಷಣ್ಣೇ ಕರ್ಷೆ ಯಮ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಜಾಪತ್ಯ ವ್ಯೂಹರಶ್ಮಿನ್ ಸಮೂಹ ತೇಜೋ ಯತ್ತೆ ರೂಪಂ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣತಮ ತತ್ತೇ ಪಶ್ಯಾಮಿ ಯೋ ಸಾವಸೌ ಪುರುಷ ಸೋಹಮಸ್ಮೀ 
ವಾಯುರನಿಲಂ ಅಮೃತ ಅಥೇದ ಭಸ್ಮಾಂತಗಂ ಶರೀರ ಓಂ ಕ್ರತೋ ಸ್ಮರ ಕೃತಗಂ ಸ್ಮರ ಕ್ರತೋ ಸ್ಮರ ಕೃತಗಂ ಸ್ಮರ ಅಗ್ನೇ ನಯ ಸುಪತಾರಾಯ ಅಸ್ಮನ್ ವಿಶ್ವಾನಿ ದೇವ ವಯುನಾನಿ ವಿದ್ವಾನ್ ಯುಯೋಧ್ಯ ಸ್ಮಜ್ಜುಹುರಾಣ ಮೇನೋ ಭೂಯಿಷ್ಟೇ ನಮ ಉಕ್ತಿ ವಿಧೇಮ ಭೂಯಿಷ್ಟೇ ನಮ ಉಕ್ತಿ ವಿಧೇಮ ಈಶಿತ ಸರ್ವಭೂತಾನೂತಮಯಶ್ಚಯ ಈಶಾ ವಾಸ್ಯನ ಸಂಬೋಧ್ಯ ಈಶ್ವರ ತಂ ನಮ್ಯಹಂ ಈಶ್ವರ ತಂ ನಮ್ಯಹಂ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ನಿತ್ಯು ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾದಿಭ್ಯೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಕರ್ತೃಭ್ಯೋ ವಂಶ ಋಷಿಭ್ಯೋ ಮಹದ್ಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ಗುರುಭ್ಯ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಪಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೀತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವತ್ಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಶಾಂತಿಮಂತ್ರ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸೊ ವಿ ಸೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಆಫ್ ಈಶಾವಾಸ್ಯ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಈಶಾವಾಸ್ಯಮಿದ ಯತ್ಕಿಂಚ ಜಗತ್ಯಾಂ ಜಗತ್ ಭುಂಜೀತ ಮಾ ಘೃತ ಕಸ್ಯಸ್ವಿಧನ ಸೋ ವಿ ನ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಜಗತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಪರ್ಸೀವಬಲ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಸಟಲ್ ಇನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಡಸೆಂಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಜಗತ್ಯಾಂ ಜಗತ್ ಯತ್ಕಿಂಚ ಜಗತ್ಯಾಂಕಿ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ತತ್ ಸರ್ವ ಈಶಾವಾಸ್ಯ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಚ್ಛಾದನ ಆರ್ ಈಸ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಈಶಾ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಶಾ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಆರ್ ದ ಓಮ್ನಿ ಪೋರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ we can tell we can tell that as brahman so the 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 per, the pervish the pervasive nature of brahman in and through all the objects perceivable however subtle or gross it is is complete only when is permeated by isha ತೇನ ತ್ಯಕ್ತೇನ ಭುಜೀತ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ತೇನ ತ್ಯಕ್ತೇನ ಬೈ ದ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಯರ್ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪರ್ಮಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಮಾ ಘೃದ ಕಸ್ಯ ಸಿದ್ಧನ ಮಾ ಘೃದ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಡೋ ನಾಟ್ ಕವೆಟ್ 
So do not covet. Here the kasya svidhanam has got two meanings in it also because the word svidh is a nipata. So kasya svidhanam, whatever may be the dhanam, do not covet it because it is all belonging to Brahman. So have a detachment towards that and protect yourself so that you are also part of Brahman only. And if you consider yourself also as part of Brahman, then Kasya Siddhanam has been, after all, it is your own wealth. Because if you are also Brahman and the entire perceivable world is also Brahman, why should you separately have a desire or the purpose of coveting this wealth? So therefore, Maghrita, you should not have any lust for or desire for coveting this because this is all yours only or you are invariably you are. You are the one which is there. You are Brahman and the everyday perceivable world is also Brahman only. Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam. So the, all this everything Sarvam is Isha Vasyam, is permeated by Brahman only. So there is no iota of or no, no atom which is without Brahman. So therefore, this is the first mantra which is telling what should be the approach of a person of detachment for the path of, path of Nivarti Marga. Nivarti Marga means for emancipation. Now, the second mantra is talking about totally the, the different picture altogether. Kurvan neva iha karmani jiji vishe chadam samaha evam toyi na anyato asti na karma lipyade nare. So now here he is talking about those who are into karma yoga or karma as their purpose of life. Not pravarti marga, what's what we call it as a pravarti marga. The act, the path of action. Now, most of the people are into this path of action only because they are considering nare. Nare means human, as a human being. They think they are human beings. So they consider that their job is to do act as per the Vedic dictums. The Vedas have given, you know, do's and don'ts. So they think the Vedas are talking only for the do's and don'ts and they have not considered this Upanishad, the end part of the Vedas, as part of their, uh, part of the Veda into which they should give special attention. So they think that Agnihotradi, all this Agnihotra other and other type of karmas which are being ordained by the Vedas are the ones which is should be done so that they live for 100 years. Shadam Samaha. So, Chiji Vishet is to those who love to live a full life of 100 years by doing Kurvan Neva Karmani. The Karmani Kurvan Neva Iha. By doing these actions as ordained by the Vedas, if you want to live a hundred years, then you should take on the activity as the dictum by the Vedas. Evam toi na anyodavasti. There is no other path for you because you want to enjoy the karma phalas and will live for hundred years. So Agnihotra Adi Karmani, all those karmas after having done for hundreds of years, you live here for hundred years. But na karma lipyade te nare, those human beings, those who think that they are human beings, for them, the, the karmas what they are doing, if they are done as per the Vedic injunction, then those karmas are not going to bind them is what they think and their hundred years they will complete and then they go to Pradhirloga, Brahma Loga or Chandra Loga, Surya Loga all these Lokas, Indra Loga, Brahma Loga etc. 
so what they think is that those karmas are not going to or uh, bind them because they are doing as per the vedic dictums but acharya shankara says that no even if you do it by the the vedic dictums the agnihotra this karmani unless it is done with the previous attitude of protection of the no so that you develop a detachment and your karmas are not going to bind you if you are going to do it this is way so even though kurvanneva karmani jiji visheshadam sama has been mentioned by the upanishad the karna karma da na karma lipyade nara nare when this is to be to be taken it seriously that you know so that the prakarantaram nasti there is no other way if you do it as per the vedic dictum then you are going back to these lokas which are being given pitruloka to brahma loka and chine punye martyalogam bishandi after having done that when the punyas are completed you fall back on to this human body again so that you can repeat the karmas again and again then this this transmigration of going to the upper worlds and coming back again keeps on happening but you will never na karma lipyade nare that will not happen to you unless you are to take this first shloka first mantra what has been given that detachment unless you are doing that you will not be able to do that ada shastra vihitani karmani agnihotrani kurvanneva jiji vishay so you may do this life 100 years by doing the karmas as ordained by the agnihotra the karmas so there is an objection to this by the purva pakshi or the opponent who is asking kadam punar punaha diva gamyate purvena mantrena sanyasino jnana nishta dvitiyena tad ashaktyasy karma nishta so the opponent is asking how do you have arrived at these two karma these two shlokas are separately why cannot be both be for, for the one purpose only so shankaracharya says uchchede let me to explain to you have you not heard that jnana karmano vira virodham parvadavat akampyam that jnana and karma are opposition opposite in nature see when the karmas are being done we have a kartrutva bhava that i am the doer i am the enjoyer of the karma so all the karmas whatever may be the agnihotra or whatever may be the karmana that karma have the doership and the enjoyership therefore it cannot be in the jnana marga in the jnana marga what happens we are coming to that knowledge that atma i am atma aham eva idam sarvam i am the atma and i am the all this brahma eva asana achadanam krutva all by permeating all these things i am indeed everything so there is nothing for me to be looking forward for enjoying nor there is any activity any activity which will give me a bhoktritva or even enjoyment because i am in and through all of them so there is no doership no enjoyership this is the jnana marga so this is jnana marga and the karma marga there is a doership and enjoyership so jnana karmano virodham that the, the opposing nature of jnana and karma parvadavat akampya like two mountains they cannot be moved or they cannot be merged together you can river you can merge two rivers to become one river but that is not possible in the case of mountains two mountains stand untenable or in unmovable to such an extent that they will always remain as two separate mountains same is the case with jnana and karma so this is the nature of jnana and karma so 
that is what is being given separately by the two separate mantras in the first and second where it is said that by act of detachment you have to protect not only yourself you have to protect everything because you are indeed everything so by doing that you are never neither coveting anything nor going to have any icha or a desire to covet anything because you know that ahameda idam sarvam i everything is here what is there is the same brahma or atma which i am also made of and the, every atom every object in this world is made of the same thing so etnyana margi will be looking through the knowledge of detachment whereas in the second mantra we we are seeing that the karmas are or for karma there is a kartrutva bhava that i am the doer of agni hotra and therefore the the phala karma phala of the each of the yogas yogas are from prithru loga to brahma loga whatever is attainable is also my bhoktrutvam is the and is my for me to enjoy so these two are the basically the nature of the uh, kartrutva bhoktrutva so therefore the karma yogin or the karma those who are doing agni hotra di they don't have that jnana of that i am eha idam sarva so their karmas will be that for let me do these karmas as a kartru so that in this life putra mitra loka daradi ada this that is like that the wealth putra by son and the then the wife wealth enjoyment and loka all this pitru loka to brahma loka whatever lokas i can achieve by these karmas those will be my you know fruits of enjoyment which which the through the karmas i will be doing so i being the kartra karta or the doer of these uh, actions i will be ordained or i'll be benefited by these phalas of the karmas depending upon the karma which i am doing and these two differentiation is again shown in the 7th and 18th mantra of the same upanishad later to come which we will be seeing it in detail at that time so these two mantras have got very definitive purpose therefore the first mantra is for the jnana margin and the second mantra is for the karma yogin karma ya karma man those who are doing so whether they are karma yogin also or not they have to perform the karmas as ordained by the nanya panda vidyate for them there is no other panda or there is no other marga there is no other route through which they can achieve that because they are they want to live 100 years by doing the karma now atho dwamini divide nitarthe ayo mandram arabhyate now begins this verse for decrying the man who is devoid of the knowledge not only he had the uh, upanishad given the marga or the given the route for the karma yo karma uh, those who are following the karma here in the third mantra the same upanishad is decrying or even ridiculing those who are following the karma margas so that we should understand that it is even though it may be ordained by the vedas we should also understand that the same veda is being ridiculed by the upanishad when it is coming to jnana marga or the the acts of the karma those who are ordaining the karma for that the third mantra is asurya namate loka andena tamasavrata तगुमस्ते प्रत्यभिगच्छन्ति येके च आत्महनो जना असूर्य देयर इज टू वेज इन व्हिच दिस दिस वर्ड इज बीइंग इंटरप्रेटेड बाय डिफरेंट पीपल असूर्य मींस नॉट सूर्य असूर्य मींस नॉट सूर्य असूर्य मींस डार्कनेस और सनलेस नामते लोका 
that loka te loka that loka is called nama asurya is darkness or sunless right now andena tamasavruta it is covered by ignorance or here anda means darkness or gloom or or you can say in the in the context of jnana marga it is called ignorance so now that those world is called the asurya or the sunless loka or the tamasa world the world of tamas which was because why it is andena tamasa vrita in the jnana marga we saw that isha vasya midam sarvam that that world is per, permeated by isha or brahman which is the knowledge the light of knowledge itself so there cannot be tamasa vrita there cannot be a darkness in that world where whichever world it is so here we are talking about a world which is totally contradictory to the brahman with our where the world is world is full of uh world is full of tamas or ignorance so what here we have to understand is that this world is which is being told here is being given to those who are following karma because it is because of ignorance that they go into this world so for that purpose they are it is told that those who are following karma marga will be going to the world of dark, darkness now shankaracharya goes to one step ahead it is not asura alone the word asura doesn't mean that it is darkness the world or they know the the suras means the gods the asuras means the demons it is not that way we have to interpret we have to interpret this is as asurya only as the light the darkness only paramatma bha paramatma abhava advaye apekshaya deva dvayo hi api asura even the devas are asuras because paramatma bhava is not there even in the devas devas are people who are going to higher world even up to hiranya garbha world those brahma prajapati indra all of them are called as the suras or the what you, what they call it as the gods but in this pretext when andena tamasavrita they are also covered by ignorance because they think that after completing their life as indra or hiranyagarbha or prajapati they will come back and they will be able to do karma again shrine punni martyalogam vishandi they will go back again into the higher logas so they are also what you called andena tamasavrita they have been also covered by the uh, the world of ignorance so they are also called asurya tagam pratyabhikachandi they go to these world they to the world who ye the question is asked to who pratyabhikachandi ye pratyabhikachandi who are all the people going to this andena tamasavrita world of darkness ke cha atma hano jana do those people here the word jana is used because jananam those who people take the rebirth free birth means even the devas take rebirth after the completion of their period of particular world they are destined indra is in the indra loka brahma is the brahma loka varuna is the varuna loka all of them after having the completed their lifetime they come back jana for the birth again so they are all called janaha in plural so what are they why are they called janaha because they do not know what is the nature of atma so therefore they are atmahanaha 
दे आर कॉल्ड द वन हु किल्स आत्मा और बाय 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 डेफिनेशन दे हैव दे आर थिंकिंग दे आर कमिंग टू दे आर कंप्लीटिंग दे आर डाइंग एंड कमिंग फॉर बर्थ अगेन actually we are every one of them are atma and atma has no birth or death but since you think that you have a birth and death you are called the one who kills atma whether you are a deva whether you are a rasura whether you are a human being doesn't matter so every one of us who think that i am having a birth and death is called a killer of atma and they therefore they pratyavika chandi they go to this world of that tamasa vrata to the world of darkness and again and again so they are the surya nama loga so kadamte atmanam nityam hananti how do they how do they how do they kill the atma nityam avidya doshena so it is the due to the avidya jnana abhava they don't have that jnana which is explained in the first mantra they that isha vasi midam sarvam so tena tekthena bunjita you have to protect that yourself from that so they don't protect themselves from this world of transmigration and they think that they are avidvamsa they are they are called avidvamsa with people who are, do not have the knowledge of the atma therefore they are called atmahana because they think that they have birth and death so they come back to this world again and again and whatever may be their position they are cut phalam ajara amaratva adi samveda adi lakshanam at hatyeva irobhudam bhavati pragrata avidvamso janaha atmahana ityuchyate so these are because they think that the avidya due to avidya they think the phalam is charamara jes the birth and death is their their life how they are looking into this world that they will do if it is a human being he thinks that he will live for 100 years if it is a pitra loga he is got a higher life span if he is a karma karma devas then they have got a higher life ye devas have got other than higher life the brahma lokas have got other life indras is supposed to be the higher than the devas and then brahma is supposed to be higher than the indra leva and the hiranyagarbha is the highest then even hiranyagarbha shrine punne martyalogam vishanti he comes back to this world to do the karmas because this martyaloga or the human body is the karma loka where the vedas have been given for doing the vedas and where the karma phalas can be achieved from from, from the from the pidru loga to hiranyagarbha loga so therefore these people who are thinking that they have to achieve these different worlds come back to the human form and do the acts as ordained by the vedas whether the agni hotra adi or whichever may be the karma satis as their wishes are there so they are all driven by the desire so the upanishad say magrida kasya siddhanam you should not covet for the any of this wealth because you are akarta abokta you don't have to do anything because you are nitya mukta you are by de- by define you are atma and atma has no birth or death therefore there is no need for you to covet for any wealth still if you think that you are not able to do this asya tena taktena bunjida so therefore you don't think that you can do that detachment or renunciation and by doing that if you think that you are not going to be successful then the upanishad says that karmanyeva or kurvanyeva karmani you do this karmas by doing this alone jiji vishe satam vasama you will live 100 years so that you can do all karmas which are as given by the vedas and then you will be able to go to the higher world ya whatever may be that defined by na anyato asti there is no other world there is no other way which we can tell you 
the Upanishads itself says that there is no other way we can guide you because you cannot, you are not in a position to understand or act, accept this world of Jnana Marga. So therefore you do it, but do it in such a way that you do the karma lipyate. Let that the karmas which you are doing should not bind you. So that after doing many, even going up to Hiranyagarbha Loka, when you realize that Pariksha Lokan Karma Jetan Brahmana Nirveda Maya Nasti Agrata Kritena. So after having tested all those karmas up to the Hiranyagarbha Loka, when you come back to the world of human life again, that time let these karmas not be binding you so that you get a higher life or a better life and you get your chitta shuddhi and in the chitta, by attaining chitta shuddhi you will be in a position to get that jnana marga and then you can get to the the marga, marga of the the first mantra what has been said suppose if you are not able to do that then you are neither you are in the first marga nor in the second marga then you are only driven by the atmahana you are you are been deemed as the one who is killing the Atma. Therefore, Atmahanaha to Tam Pratyabhika Chandi. They are pushed into the world of Tamasa. They have been to pushed into the world of the darkness of having no Jnana and then desires control you. And those controlled desires will work again and again in you for repetition of what you are desiring and that world is called Asurya Loka or the world of darkness. This is how the first three mandras are to be completed. Now the fourth mandra is talking about about what is that nature of that Atma. So so that Atma is being described in the from the fourth mandra onwards by the Upanishad which will be dealt in detail by me in the uh, next week because uh, I will have to do the mantra 4 and 5 together so that we will know the, the, the connection between the nature of Atma mentioned in the first fourth mantra and its nature in the fifth mantra which are connected between each other. The age company or the more nature of the Atma is being described by these fourth and fifth mandras, which I will be doing in the day after tomorrow, Friday's class. So today I will stop here because now we know the first mandra is for Jnana Marga, second mandra is for Karma Marga, but if you are not Karma Marga and Jnana Marga, but you are into, into the desire, world of desires, and you become Atmahanaha. Therefore, you will be pushed into the world of darkness. That is what the third mantra has been described as by the Upanishad. So here I will stop for that today so that I can take question answers. And Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Arihi Om Dhanivada. Thank you all. Thank you, Binduji. Wonderful session. Nitya, thank you so much for the chances. Um, to start in the invocation. Uh, everyone, uh, please uh, raise your hand if uh, you um, have a question related to Isha, and uh, we'll keep it uh, contained uh, to Isha and a general question on Advaita if it applies. So please raise your hand and please come up and don't be shy. No question is um, isn't relevant, so please come up if you're new. Haryom Venkat. Haryom, Haryom Vindaji, Haryom Nitaji, Haryom. Thank you. Thank you for a very nice session on this. Vindaji uh, recapping every time helps a lot. 
um, you talked about uh, nan and karma exclusivity and uh, talk about you know this gnana karma samuchaya uh, that exclusivity and also knowing both uh, is uh, is to be you know i don't know maybe i somewhere i remember knowing both can only liberate you out of this uh, it's a vidya ancha vidya ancha so you should know both one who knows both liberate you out is that where it is driving towards um in total agreement just that knowing both is essential recognizing both is essential um is that the meaning getting driven here and i know effect of karma is also described in verse you know verse 3 right the world of uh, darkness the blinding darkness uh, they kill this uh, self um every time they give up the body um uh, not utilizing properly so uh, is this the structure of this uh, uh, to drive the future meaning uh, uh, how is this structured binu ji yeah it is structured because in the 7th and 18th mantra there is re- the karma marga is being repeated so there is a particular it is not even though see uh the the problem with ishavasi upanishad is that it is not a structured upanishad as per uh, the because it is the first and the most archaic upanishad which is there in uh, in the recorded history so the words being such that we will have to get the insight into it because those words were used in which meaning we do not know if you look at the classical sanskrit most of the tra- people most of those commentators have translated it keeping in mind the classical sanskrit as the main uh, sur- you know dictionary or source of meaning for it but there were commentaries prior to shankaracharya available which shankaracharya had the access to it which his master govindapada and he is gaudapada govindapada and previous acharyas commentaries were also available during shankaracharya's time thankfully alauddin kilji or uh, bhakti ar kilji had not destroyed nalanda and uh, the even the tatshashila was not destroyed at that time so those doc- documents were available for shankaracharya and those who were interested so from whatever is available from shankaracharya spirit before the destruction of those nalanda takshashila thing we can we can say that shankaracharya had fairly good access to the old word and their meanings available whereas the subsequent commentators including madhusudan sarasvati vidyaranya others others didn't have the access to those dictionaries so not to talk about the modern commentators so they would have depended upon the modern dictionaries and classical sanskrit so even though shankaracharya had that advaita and his mind fixated on that he has used it to his purpose because when a, a person has an agenda definitely he will use to his best of knowledge that my agenda is used in my commentaries so those who see the other commentaries would have been given the, the statement that he has not used it properly because the meanings are like that but i beg to differ here because shankaracharya had the access to those old dictionaries or old meanings whereas the modern commentators or even the commentators before vallabhacharya or even others had the no access to those dictionaries so that is why uh, the commentary of shankaracharya need to be taken in seriousness that is why i see and the order in which these mantras are appearing if you look at shankaracharya's commentary also it will be varying depending upon the words which are appearing there which he himself says that the word 
vidya vidya sambuti asambuti has got with different meanings so we we are we take it as vidya vidya by the classical sanskrit is knowledge and karma no it is upasana only what is to be taken there then only you will know the correct meaning so prakaracharya has used vidya as upasana in most of his commentaries please yes there are places where he has used as vidya as uh, knowledge but most of the places when it comes to the context you can see he is used it as upasana marga so this is one thing which i have studied of my known from my guru also so yes as i said that structure we cannot really pinpoint to the way you asked the question sure bindu yeah. no i'm i'm in complete surrender here this is a guru parampara the sada shiva samaramba shankaracharya madhyamam you know asmad asmad acharya paryantam vande guru parampara i totally accept the way uh, shankaracharya has transmitted it uh, complete surrender to the way it is articulated and complete you know trust in the way it is interpreted no doubt uh, with that only i'm <laughs> seeking the you know the the whole thing uh, in a way that uh, we can relate to the current uh, terms because there is no use of yoga or karma yoga you know uh, you know uh, this is like you know karma tyaga karma phala tyaga none of that is a mention here it only talks about the effect of that karma blind karma uh, and the darkness in which it is uh, done uh, is killing the very uh, self among all of this i think that is how i am getting you uh, binduji i am not you know going here here on this uh, waiting for how it will unveil in the coming days uh, thanks for this binduji uh, namaste binduji uh, <clears throat> namaste on this topic just uh, i think like nitya ji also put the comment uh, uh, is it possible that it is just a, a very genius one of the genius thought of shankara to technically explain the gnana and karma as two separate things though in the earlier literature this kind of clarity might not be there kind of thing there definitely shankaracharya has twisted the uh, his commentary to drive in his advaita point definitely but there have been advaitic commentaries also earlier but not to the extent of uh, you know forcefully driving home the atmahana the words you know atmanam ghananti is the word used by shankaracharya so that those words are you know like the hammer on the last nail of the coffin where you cannot deviate but adhere to advaita so that is what and uh, and as per uh, what i remember is that the the mat the four mats are not by the the commentator bashakara it is by uh, acharya shankara who is 200 years after shankara who started the four mats so th- that is where i, I think i think even yadavid ji has mentioned that in one of those Ah, yeah, yeah. Not, not about the mats actually only about right. this uh, gnana karma division because ah. if you see there is a slight hint for example in gita where it says shreyo sarvani yajnani gnana yajnana parant but this kind of two separate mountains kind of complete distinction is technically very helpful i feel like uh, in that way it's uh, i consider yeah in fact he o- he openly asked the question to the opponent don't you have you not heard that jnana karma viruddha is like parvadavarta akampya <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> for which he yeah for for which the opponent had no answer because he has heard it oh so such a thought was all, already prevalent is it <laughs> yeah it is not shankara's first shankara is saying that shankaracharya is saying have you not heard it which means it was there earlier because generally they they say it like for example when doing yajna the gnana about that yajna and then they say it is a samuchaya right so this difference of brahma gnana versus normal gnana is very well brought out i think in some places by him actually speaking uh, even though vachaspati mishra has been a mimamsaka and a nyaya 
expert you if you read the bhamadi bhashya of the shankaracharya's bhashya's bhashya the way he is taking out on opponents is you know the next best book you can talk about is advaita siddhi by madhusudana saraswati otherwise no book can beat no or no commentary can beat uh, bhamati bhashya for that purpose and once one one who studies that doesn't need any, any other book he can take on any opponent on advaita thank you thank you vinder ji unfortunately the, the unfortunately there is no english translation for bahmati but there are hindi translations available bindu ji i have english one i can share the name oh bahmati is a yeah yeah okay Let's can you put the... it in the chat yeah I'll take a picture and try to find the book hidden somewhere i'm going to pull it out now so oh, <laughs> oh, okay 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 <laughs> okay uh, so uh, see with my view of binduji is uh, shankara is uh, simply harvesting advaita uh, among uh, the entire uh, setup the, uh, but there no i think this that was very clearly uh, you know seen by him uh, uh, and he just telling it can i tell you one thing here sure. a, bi- a bit of understanding is required the earlier commentators had advaita in their commentary and those commentaries were totally what you call against karma being done at all that means you should take to sanyasa and get lost that's all their their stand was there and due to this what happened in the society was there people found that if you want to go follow the jnana marga they have to abandon family wealth and everything become sanyasi that they were not fully matured mentally to do that so those are the people who got enticed by bauda philosophy saying that you can be in the society as a bhikshu and you know have good food and go roam around the world whereas shankara's earlier commentator said no you have to do vana prastha and get lost in the forest you can you cannot come back to the society in fact i didn't read the bhashya if you had read the bhashya you would have read understood that it is very clearly saying that what were the taitriya aranyaka and others are even mentioning that they should not come back to the world once having taken sanyasa so that was not very uh, you know palatable for those who are taking sanyasa so shankaracharya had a agenda he wanted the advaita to be held up at the same time those who were going towards the buddha bhikshu type of life those who have to be brought back into karma marga with the saying that you can follow if you are a apt student from brahmacharya itself you can take sanyasa or from vanapur from grihastha ashrama you can take sanyasa or go to vanaprastha and then sanyasa so this root was given by you know given that it is there in the vedas so you don't have to say that all those jnana margis have to take sanyasa and go to sanyasa he has said that even though it is parvadavat takampya those are tickling that is why he is mentioning that very clearly that if you want to live 100 years you can do the karma and everything but if you are not doing that in the prescribed manner in the vedas but going back to the thinking that you are coming back by doing that you know pundya loka going to the brahma loka indra loka those are all people called atma hanaha because they think they are jara mara they have got birth and death after the period is over so he is addressing those people who want to go to lokas higher lokas by doing karmas rather than doing karmas in this world by as ordained by vedas but having at an attitude of karma yoga so that you live 100 years and you are born immediately back in this world with a chitta shuddhi so that you get a jnana marga but those who don't do it are the people who are looking for brahma loga indra loga or varuna loga kubera loga etc etc 
so those who are atmahanah so this is what you have to be keeping in mind so the hardest to digest is that <laughs> classifying all the sura sura everybody as asura that is a super hard hit on this uh, as you explained it uh, that is the one to digest very well yeah that this those are all called atmahanah but not those who are following the vedic karmas and want to live in this world come back and leave that so that they get a chitta shuddhi but they will be having they will be following dhyana marga upasana marga as much as possible so that they come back immediately as a human life you know if you remember the ajamila ajamila story in the bhagavatam so those who are the people who who would like to get back without going to the indra loka varuna loka etc namaste prasad ji welcome up on the stage i haven't seen you for a little while namaste prasad namaste bindu ji namaste patrick hi everyone i just think that uh, i don't know to kind of uh, as if there is a kind of course correction or there is a kind of defending that is happening to shankaracharya's philosophy but i think we should uh, take uh, these classes in terms of the parampara uh, that it comes to and the parampara by itself has proven its legitimacy by liberating all the people who have followed it right but of course with the right qualifications so yeah that is something i wish when we come for these classes that uh, what bindu ji is teaching does not go to the historicity there's some some value to historicity of course but then it just goes into uh, the semantics of all these things but more importantly is the understanding uh, i mean the total scope of understanding what uh, shankaracharya is trying to say i don't think we can take line by line <clears throat> and try to decipher his philosophy there is a spirit of shankara uh, right that uh, comes around and uh, that through studying all the upanishads uh, the the idea is to understand the spirit of shankara's heart or the spirit of shankara's philosophy in terms of gyana karma uh, and you know the 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 inevitable uh, connection between the two uh, that is spoken of to a great extent even in the gita right and when gita speaks of karma he never speaks of it as karma he speaks of it as yoga right and he, uh, the word that he uses is become a yogi and his yogi is uh, the totality of not uh, in a total sense of not uh, cutting off anything so that's of course a diversion from the traditional monastic implications that shankaracharya brings however the idea is always there that the extroverted sense of uh, fulfilling desires cannot bring you gyana it cannot bring you gyana so if somebody is quoting the gita that the gita says differently if you go through the sixth chapter krishna asks uh, him to be doing actions but to drop all sense of beingness and realize that it is him or in first in some places he says paramatma and in some places he says my me in me who sees everyone in me who sees me in everyone right so that yogi of even the gita is like a, a genius that has brought about the fulfillment of uh the gyana marga in a way that gyana is still retained right but can this be possible for a person not renouncing and taking up sannyasa that is how it is shown but there is the implications don't change right the sacrifices don't change and the 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 commitment to the realization of truth the inward journey the nivritti that aspect does not change so i think that uh, the more we go ahead in the ishavasya upanishad i think our more focus should be you know how to attain the self which of course uh, uh, bindu ji will guide us through and uh, that is something i just want to say but however uh, everything's fine i think some historicity is important but beyond which you will always have people coming and saying is this historicity of value or not is this true or not i think so i don't think so so that really Uh, kind of uh, kind of uh 
kind of diminishes the spirit of Advaitic learning. So I just wanted to add that. And thank you. Thank you, Prasad. Uh, sorry, Binduji, I was away from the phone. I have excuses. Um, no problem. The question I had was exactly about the, the desire aspect. I think yesterday we were, or at least I was pushing on that question. So the question for me remains is, um, so there are claims about desire. There is a claim about a desire that results into, it's like, there are desires which will result into normal actions. That means vivarika. But some people are saying that there is a desire for attainment, but that should not be considered in desire. So that confuses for me the whole picture. So I was just wondering, uh, in normal language, uh, yeah, what is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, beyond or no, without it. desire, can there be stuff? Right? Okay. Or can there okay. be even purpose without desire? Okay, let me explain to you the classification. Then you can arrive at your own conclusion, the purpose. See, Nitya Naimitika, that is daily routines. And Naimitika is by force of any inc incident, any Nimitta, that causes for one to do the job. This, this is one cat set of category. In this one, so for the, from the Vedas point, there are actions which are categorized into these two. Also, there is another set of classification within the Veda that is called Vidhi and Nisheda. Vidhi is which you should be doing in a particular pattern and a fashion. Nisheda is those actions which should not be done at any cost or any time or as, you know, bar, bar, you know, barred by the Vedas for doing it. For example, Suram na Pipeda. You should not drink in, intoxicating drinks is one word. But there itself, in the particular, one particular Yaga, there is a there is a function where it is members of the yaga who are doing it so even though it is a prohibited item for certain members of the yaga it is permitted as a part of the yaga not for, to get intoxicated even though the same item is intoxicate is for intoxication the permission is given for Tasting it as part of the yaga because it is for the lower gods where the yaga is being done. Now, the Nitya Naimittiga. Naimittiga is what is happened due to incidents were due to so that, you know, when you had an eclipse happens, then you are doing certain actions. When, when it is, uh, you know, particular uh, set of stars aligning, you do certain pujas or there are certain yagas. Their type, these are type of the called naimitiga, nimittam. When it is, there is an incident which is happening. Nitya are your daily routine things like morning, afternoon, evening, three, three times what is called trisandhya, sandhya vandanam, and etc. like this thing. And then there is the vidhi, what is called, uh, for example, one who wants to go to Sorga 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 Kamaha, he should do a yaga, Agnihotra Yaga, he should do. So that is a ordinance ordinance by the Veda to do a particular yaga for a particular purpose. Now, in all these things, there is what you call Kartrutva Bhava or the doership. Whether it is a Nitya Karma, Naimitika Karma, or Vidhita Karma, Vihita Karma. 
any nishedha karma nobody is going to do so i am not talking about it in all these three there is a kartrutva bhava and kartrutva bhava is coming because of what there is a bhoktrutva bhava that i am the doer because i want to enjoy the fruit of action because if you don't do a nitya karma or a naimitika karma there is a penalty or a prayaschitta which is given by the vedas or if you don't do the penalty there is a penance which you will have to pay in the form of uh, i mean uh, dukha which will be in the form of a punya and papa right the, all those these are the way the the bhoktrutva comes the rea- the actions reactions are given back for the actions so the desirability is based on this was the lifestyle of people during the vedas period vedic period you cannot compare that to today's activities because we are neither able to know what is given in the vedas we are not doing nitya karmas we are not even do naimitika karmas we are not even do veda karmas or anything that so our karmas are jeeva to maintain the life and to maintain the life what is today's requirement is what is being given so we cannot compare the words used in the vedas or the upanishads for our day to day activities as for the desirability is concerned our desirabilities are not ordained by the vedas it is more on today's commercialism or the requirement of roti kapda makan you know you need a housing shelter and food so that has been we have been reduced to animals for all purpose because animals also have this three or requirement only so from that point of view human life is now reduced to thing but well of being having the faculty of jnana marga or the knowledge to acquire humans have got a different thing that we can also pursue that jnana marga even though we cannot follow the veda marga vaidika marga we can follow that jnana marga and the animalistic living if we don't want the jnana marga or the vaidika marga so this is how the classification of the work or the category to be done so the desire what we are talking here about is mainly about whatever takes you away from the jnana marga is a action of ignorance act of ignorance and that act of ignorance is normally and most 100% of the time driven by desires because then then only you will have the doership and the enjoyership so keep these things in mind now you whether your purpose of action is answered or not you i don't know you you have to tell me vinod uh, ji the reason why i'm asking is uh, there are two reasons behind this so i understand this thank you um there is this whole idea there are other philosophies in which people are talking about evolu- evolving human beings are evolving and they have a purpose and everything you are doing even even surviving will be put under that kind of thing so what i'm trying to roughly say is that this strict division that you showed these categories of where which actions are to be considered uh nitya and anitya and these two two kind of things uh and there is it's very easy to mix them up uh, and there is a lot of argumentation now the reason for the second part of my question is and i asked before uh so the word purpose uh, is a biggest struggle for a man or a human being now is it connected to desire or no so i i simply asking <laughs> actually this got question because um this this goes to the question higher higher question would be about what is dharma then because it seems that uh, yeah so so sorry to say a lot of things but these are the areas in which i'm okay. struggling to okay. make sense okay don't worry very simple the purpose of life for everyone whether it is a human being or animal 
whoever is we call it as living beings nobody wants to be in a perpetual sorrow we are all looking for happiness and freedom from torment or dukkha so dukkha nivritti sugha prapti freedom from torment and attainment of happiness is the purpose of life seen by animal living and human living the methodology may be different but basically you can narrow it down to a broad category of this nature now the dukkha prap dukkha nivritti or the freedom from torment when analyzed you will find that it is due to the lack of knowledge of what causes me torment what causes me dukkha or what is what causes me less of torment or more, makes me more towards happiness or the happiness also there is a confusion i'll come to that second later so the dukkha nivritti is possible only what causes you dukkha or torment and shastra is the only pramana where we because we have been living in this world for ways for achieving roti kapda or makan and has never been free from this three of the requirement of the bodily requirement of roti kapda or makan even though it may be basic level but we have been going overboard for ag- aggrandizing those things so the purpose is not to aggrandize these things but to keep it to the minimum requirement of living now when you keep it to the minimum level of living the the purpose for then how do we i achieve happiness of unless i aggrandize these things is a question which can come now i go to the second aspect of it aggrandizing have never given permanent happiness to anyone because anything which is in the action field that is akrita krita krita means by act of action only you can achieve that any aggrandizing is a result of an aggrandizing is a act of action and any action is a beginning of time has got in the time span so whatever is in the time span has an end in time span so the aggrandizing even the richest of the richest we can become poor in the poorest of the poor in no time or even if he has lived his lifetime the the aggrandized wealth doesn't last for long, then generations to come so we have seen all those things so where is the happiness lying then in that case that is where the shastra is saying that the happiness is your nature you don't have to go for happiness anywhere what you are holding on to is false notion of happiness by aggrandizing so the shastra says that your happiness is your nature that anaya is anaya sena without any effort you are the nature of happiness all your effort is for aggrandizing and that has not given you happiness so the happiness is the purpose of life which is the nature of human life not only human life animal life also but animals do not think therefore they continue to live in the you know don't uh, for the survival so human beings have been able to think therefore <coughs> the purpose of life has been to find the happiness which is our nature and that is possible when we stop aggrandizing are you thank you hari om bitoji thank you thank you everyone